Okay then my friends, so now we've got our base view project up and running. The next step is to install Pinya and to make a Pinya store so we can use it to manage global state in the application. So what I'm gonna do is actually cancel out of this process right here by pressing Control C and then yes. And then I'm gonna install Pinya by saying NPM install Pinya, press enter. So that's Pinya installed, but at the minute it's not really doing anything. What we have to do is register it as middleware in the view application. Now to do that, we need to go to the main.js file where we actually create the app and mount it. And after we create the app right here, we can just say .use to use some kind of middleware function. And what we want to use is a function called create Pinya. But first of all, we have to import that. So I'm going to do that at the top by saying import and we import create Pinya, which is a function. And that comes from the package we just installed, which is Pinya, like so. So now we can use this function, create Pinya, inside this use function and also invoke it. So now we're using this inside our application and that allows us to use Pinya stores inside our application. All right then, so now we have Pinya installed and we've also registered Pinya in the main.js file. Next up, we wanna use Pinya to create a store and that store will keep track of any global state for the application. In our case, the state is going to be a list of tasks where each task is an object with different properties. So what I'm going to do is create a stores folder, first of all, and typically we'd store all of our different stores inside this folder. So inside this folder, I'll create a new file called taskstore.js. And this file is where our Pinya task store is going to live. Now, generally speaking, for each separate bit of global state that you've got, you might make a new store and file for it. So for an authentication or user state, I might make a user store file. For state that keeps track of live comments, I might make a comments store file. And this is kind of like the modular approach that Pinya takes. For now, we only need one store, the task store. So inside this file, the first thing we need to do is import a function from Pinya, and that function is called define store. And it's this function that lets us actually make a store. So all we need to do is invoke this function down below to create the store. And this function is going to take in two arguments. The first one is like an identifier for the store. So a unique name for it. And Pinya is going to use this store name when it comes to view dev tools, when it connects to it. I'm going to call it task store, but you can call it tasks or something else entirely if you want as long as it's unique and not used by another store as well. The second argument is an object and it's inside this object that we define things like the state. Now, before we do that, I wanna export this store so that we can use it in other files later on to access the state. So first, let's store the results of this define store function in a constant. And I'm gonna call that constant use task store. So we'll set it equal to that, right? Now, the reason I'm calling it use task store is that the return value of this define store function is a function in itself. And now that function is stored in this use task store constant, right? And then we'd invoke that use task store function in a view component to get access to the store. And when we use custom functions like composables inside view components, the typical naming convention is use followed by whatever it is that we're using essentially. So this right here is just a naming convention for stores, right? Anyway, now we need to export that function as well. So just put export right in front of it. Okay, so we have this store now, but we wanna store some state inside of it. Now, the way we do that is by using a state property, and this is gonna be a function. And this function is going to return basically an object. Now, since we're returning a value, we wanna place it in parentheses and then the object. So this object is basically a state object and it can have different properties. So for example, I want to store some state which is gonna keep track of the tasks. So I'll make a tasks property and then the value of this will be an array of objects. Now, instead of me typing these out, I'm just gonna paste a couple of them in. So we have one object right here for the first task with an ID property, a title, which is a string, and also this property is fav, which is false. So the idea being that later we can toggle between favorite and not favorite when we click on those heart icons. So at the minute this is false and this is true to begin with. And 
we have a different ID for this one as well. So this is the tasks state that we want to keep track of eventually, right? Now we can also add other properties if we wanted to as well. So for example, I could add a name property, which would just be a string and that would be Yoshi. It makes no sense in the context of this application. I'm just letting you know, we could add multiple different properties down here if we wanted to. Now, like I said before, typically when you have different types of data, then you create different stores for them. So I wouldn't then go ahead and place some kind of comments date in here or authentication state or anything like that. I'd probably make a different store for that instead of having one thing to manage everything. So we can have multiple properties for this. We're just going to use tasks, but I will keep in this name for now, just to show you that we can use these multiple properties. Okay. So we have our store now we've created this but we're not really using this state in any of our components yet. And I'm going to show you how we can do that in the next lesson.